the show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's June the 13th, 2022. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com, joined as always by our manager editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day, presented as always by Life Wallet, where the time is now to take charge of your personal health. And uh, Matt, big weekend out at the U. Um, you know, I was I was out there for the Mario Cristobal camp, the seven on seven tournament. I had a chance to watch uh, Emery Williams work out Miami coaches at the camp on Saturday morning and just so much for us to talk about today. So um, let me get right to it. All right, let's start with uh, all of the official visitors that were on the Miami campus yesterday um, and over, over the course of the entire weekend. Um, just a, it's, it's, it's getting to be nitty gritty time for Miami in, in terms of recruiting. We've been talking about it. Uh, but I wanted to start with David Hicks because I, I thought the weekend went relatively well with David Hicks. I, I, I know I get accused of being overly uh, optimistic on this show, and I'm certainly not going to predict that David Hicks is coming to Miami with all of the suitors that he has as one of the top defensive players uh, in America for sure. Um, but the reviews coming off the visit, you had a chance to spend some time talking to his dad, who I know loves Miami. Um, when you – Oh, you froze, you froze on me or I froze on you. I don't know who froze on who. But, um, you know, you're away. I'm away. We're trying to cover the team uh, as best we can. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, you were out there at the camp, and obviously I talked to a lot of these kids yesterday, and David Hicks's dad was one of them. And, um, you know, per the data, and David Jr. doesn't do a lot of interviews. I actually only reached out to him once. I said, listen, if you want to give me a couple of quotes, great. I didn't hear from him, so it's fine. You know, he's got so long to go in his recruitment that there's really nothing that's going to be imminent. But Miami did put its best foot forward with him. Uh, the family had a great time. And th the most interesting part to me, and, and the only thing that was really new for me that I learned from them, because I've talked to David Jr. several times previous, previously to this, and the dad numerous times, the dad's a great guy, is they're really not looking for where David Jr. feels the most comfortable. They're not looking for the place where David has the best lobster, the best steak. They're not looking for the place where David makes the best friends on the team. A lot of recruits, that's what they do. That's not David Hicks. David Hicks's father is a former NFL player. David Hicks's father has coached David Jr. since five years old, and he's coached him to be mentally tough, not to look at the small picture, but look at the big picture. And the big picture is, hey, David Jr., do you want to have a great time in college with your friends and buddies and party a lot? Or do you want to learn from the best coaches, work your butt off, have no free time, and make a few million dollars for yourself in the NFL? Apparently, for some bizarre reason, he's chosen the latter. And so this is really – all these official visits for him are business trips. And Miami was smart enough to know that. And they had them spend an inordinate amount of time in the strength room, in the – you know, meeting with the coaches there, um, watching the workouts, you know, spending – basically watching entire workouts. Usually they'll, they'll bring you there for, you know, here's the workout room because they're working out for 10 minutes. You watch that. You don't watch two and a half hours of workouts, you know. But they meticulously did that. And not only that, they gave them a plan for here's what we're going to do with David Jr. You know, this is where we see him. This is how we see him progressing physically. I mean, the coaches, this is what they do. This is what Marcus Wall does. He makes plans for every one of these kids, and it blows the parents away. It blows, honestly, everyone away. I mean, it's almost, it's almost like when you apply for a job, you give them your resume, and you're selling yourself. Well, they're doing the opposite. They're selling themselves and giving their resumes to the recruits, and it, and it works. But does it work to the point where these guys commit, <laughs> you know? So the Under Armour All-Star game, it feels like it's 25 years away. That's yeah. when he's committing. So everything's great. Everything's awesome. But, you know, fans, I'm not sure how interested they are until someone commits, until someone even signs nowadays with the way commitments are. Um, that's that's my piece. That's, that's what I got to say on that. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely too soon to make any real predictions on on David Hicks, but he's such a huge recruit. I've had the chance to watch him up close uh, and watch him perform, and I'm telling you, man, this kid is at a whole nother level. This kid, in my opinion, is going to be an absolute beast on the college level, and 
if Miami could get him, uh, I mean, he is potentially game altering on the defensive side of the ball, in my opinion. Uh, we'll see how his career plays out. Um, but I'm expecting it to just be off the charts just because of the desire I saw, the motor I saw, the intensity I saw, the aggressiveness. I mean, I could use every adjective in the book. I could get throw out every cliche if I wanted to. Uh, David Hicks is going to be, in my mind, a big-time player at the college level and is as important of a recruitment as anybody on the board from Miami this year. And um, it was good to see that the visit appeared to go very well this weekend, considering the fact that, that the Miami coaches had a lot of distractions. And uh, when you're trying to run a camp, when you're trying to run youth camps and you got all that stuff going on, I mean, thank God that Mario Cristobal has all the layers of personnel in his program that he does because he needed every last one of them this weekend to pull off what they pulled off with the seven on seven tournaments, having have a full lineup of referees, um, take care of all that, the official visits, the, the, the meals, the, you know, the meetings, all the things that go on in official visits, the campus tours, and then to have, you know, hundreds of kids come to the campus on Sunday um, <laughs> to participate in a youth camp. I mean, that's a taken on a lot, okay, in one weekend. And um, it's everything seemed to go off, flaw, you know, flawlessly, quite frankly. And uh, among that was obviously the... Um, official visit of David Hicks. All right, uh, Matt, a guy that we had on commitment watch going into the weekend uh, was tight end Reed McKeska. And um, this one's been going very, very well. And um, after the visit, he canceled a visit to Florida and he reduced his decision-making process down to two. Miami and Oklahoma, that's his choice. Um, I know that you agree with me. I think he's going to pick the Hurricanes. Um, your thoughts on where Reed McKeska is now coming off his Miami official visit? Yeah, unless something out of the ordinary happens and some Oklahoma booster comes up with a lot of money illegally, uh, he'll be a Hurricane. You know, it, it's I, I still don't quite understand. In the old days, a recruit no, you know, the, took the visit with his parents. He commits. Like, that's it. That's what they would do. Now it's, oh, I'm going to go home. I'm going to weigh my options. You know, it's not the uh, pull the trigger and commit anymore that used to happen. It's a little different. And I don't know if some of the, not him, but in general, if some recruits do that to see, hey, you know, who's going to give me some money, you know, because it's legal now. I mean, it's illegal to say I'm going to give you this amount of money. But as you and I know, some programs, they're just boosters that are going to do that. And that's not, I don't think what's going on here, but just as a general thought for those of you out there who see 10 official visitors, you know, coming, let's say on legend, more than 10, a legends camp. And if they don't commit and they love the visit, why don't they commit? There's a lot more going on behind the scenes now than there used to be. And it's, it's, it's not the road to recruiting that I enjoy covering. <laughs> you know, I enjoy it when a recruit like this comes, has a great time, loves it and commits. That's exciting. What's not so exciting is I had a great time. I loved it. I'm down to two. I'm going to go home and, and pray on it. You know, like that doesn't do it for me. But look, I think he'll wind up a hurricane and um, it's just wait and see. He said it'll be in the next two weeks. It could be any time, honestly. All right. Another tight end was on campus this weekend. Kid by the name of Jackson Carver. He's a four star from Windsor, Connecticut, a guy whose offer list has been expanding. And just to give you an idea of how highly regarded Jackson Carver is, he's going to Alabama uh next on his um visit tours and travels uh kind of weird to have these two guys in on the same weekend uh miami would obviously like to take both if they can uh where did you feel that uh jackson carver stood coming off this official visit and more significantly an official visit weekend when there was another tight end in the group that is looking more and more like he might pick miami yeah, well, the other interesting thing about Reed McKeska is they sold him on, here's how we're going to use you. Again, it's that whole thing. Like, they give you a portfolio. This is how we're going to use you. And they're going to use him attached to the line. They're going to use him, you know, split out. And they're, they were saying, look at how, look, Josh Gaddis literally sold him on, look at how I use tight ends in my offense. I use two and three tight ends. Like, yeah, we got two tight ends coming back next year. Will Mallory's gone. So what? We use three. And he showed him all the clips, I mean, from Michigan. Um, he was blown away by that. So with Jackson Carver, you know, yeah, you say two tight ends come in at the same time. Well, they can't survive in this offense with only three tight ends that are any good. You need five. Um, so, yeah, that's a selling point for Jackson Carver, too. And 
what's funny is uh, I was talking to, to by Job came with his seven on seven coach. who's a highly respected um, former college player, seven on seven coach with C4. And uh, I don't know where this came from, but the coach says to me that by Job, we'll talk about him later, maybe, but he came unofficially Friday to Sunday. And the coach said the reason Miami coaches wanted to bring him in unofficially is because when a recruit takes a second visit to a school, the chances of him committing to that school go up 80%. I found that hard to believe, but he, I said, I said, do you have science behind that? He's like, yeah, I don't know if the science was throwing an egg in the air and looking at the picture of the egg fragments on the floor, but he says it's a real thing. So this was Jackson Carver's second visit. So I guess there's an 80% chance he's coming, Gary. Just ask by Job's uh, seven on seven coach. But no, I, I don't think I don't, I don't I don't think Jackson Carver's coming. <laughs> I threw an egg on the floor a few minutes ago. It said he's not coming. That's just me. Well, you know, that's 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 Wednesday. I'm, yeah, I'm always the optimist, right? Gary, he's not coming. There you go. So optimistic. Well, you go to Alabama Wednesday hoping to get an offer. So what does yeah. that tell you? No, like, not. that tells you he didn't get offered. One, by one of them cancels like one Alabama. <laughs> Yeah, one of them cancels a bit, the visit. The other one, um, you know, wants an offer from school. Hasn't even offered after his visit. So you can read between the lines on that one. Yeah, he's got. I mean, he's got an official visit set to Iowa, June twenty fourth. Kid from Connecticut going to Iowa. Like I like Miami's chances there a little bit. Um, he's going to LSU uh, next weekend on an official visit. Uh, so I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, I think we both feel a lot better about Reed McKeska at the tight end position than we do. Uh, Jackson Carver, but hey, you know, he, he official, it seemed to go okay. Uh, so you never know. Uh, you mentioned by Job, so I might as well jump right to him. He came on an unofficial visit this weekend, Friday to Sunday afternoon. Um, Matt, uh, your thoughts on where things stand right now with by Job? Yeah, well, you know, I, I saw reports that he worked out for coaches. I mean, the, the 7 on 7 coach says technically he did not work out for coaches. I guess he just did some running things and just very, very basic, but he was not doing an official workout, even though he was allowed to because he was here Saturday for the camp. That's when you can work out. So anyway, um, yeah, he's he's going to come back. He uh, look, he he's an inter international student athlete. I don't have his WhatsApp information. His cell phone isn't working. So I did talk to his coach who was no longer with him. And the coach said, he'll give me his WhatsApp info. So at some point in the next, I don't know, few days, hopefully we'll have an update with by himself, but it doesn't really matter because he's not in a hurry to decide anything. It's like this whole rigmarole, you know, he came down unofficially. He'll come back officially in the fall. He's not in a hurry to decide anything. Um, uh, I don't know what else to tell you. It's just, it's just wait and see. He had a, it's from all accounts, talking to the guy, I mean, talking to the guy who came with him, the seven on seven, seven coach was with him the whole time, Friday to Sunday. He had a great time, but he'll come back on an official and that'll probably uh, in some sense, give us some clarity. And I'm not sure yet. Depend. He, he, look, he's a, he's a, he's going to be a great player, but he's more of a project. He put on a lot of, of weight and strength to him. Great athlete. Uh, but it's not this type of guy who – he's a four-star, but it's not the type of guy who comes in and he's a difference maker on day one. Think a smaller version of Cyrus Moss maybe to some extent. And uh, and so we'll, we'll have to just see because I don't know if Miami's getting a bunch of other defensive ends by that, by that point. I don't know. It's almost like you slow play him a little bit. You say come on the unofficial and then come back in the fall for the official. By then you should have a pretty good sense. Hey, we're getting Ruben Bain. Hey, we're getting this guy. Hey, we're getting that guy. So then they'll know. I think this is more, I don't want to call him a, uh, you know, how people like to say he's an A, B, C, or D, whatever. He's not a backup plan. He's not a backup plan, but there might be so many defensive linemen that want to come here just because they have such a good defensive line staff now uh, that you only have a certain number you want to take every year because otherwise it screws up the following year's numbers also. Because if, if you take five defensive ends in a class the follow in 2024, who's going to want to come here that's a great defensive end? So you really want to balance your classes because there's no point in having five defensive ends in one class three of them sitting out and transferring two years later. You want to have, you know, a good steady flow of talent to where you're going to have, you know, maybe six or seven defensive ends that are really good on your roster at a time. All right, let me jump over to uh, Kennesaw, Georgia Mountain High School Center, Connor Liu, who took his official visit to Miami this weekend. Uh, another one where – the reviews seem to be great, Matt. I mean, you know, he, he spent a lot of the weekend around the team. Uh, he really liked the family atmosphere of the program. Um, said that the visit certainly did not hurt Miami in his picture. Now, 
is that good? Is that bad? <laughs> like he didn't commit. He didn't say, Oh my God, this is where I want to go. Um, you know, he's going to go to Georgia. He's going to go to Auburn. This is another kid that, that, you know, and, and, and by the way, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. I love the way Miami is recruiting in this cycle. They are not screwing around. They are going head to head with the best programs in college football. They're not going to get everybody. If they just get their fair share, it's going to be a positive, um, you know, they're not afraid of rejection or that sort of thing. They aren't recruiting Jags in this cycle. They are recruiting the best high school players in America. Matt, your impressions on Connor Liu? Well, Miami likes him a lot. I just, I'm not, I, I don't get the feeling he's going to wind up here. Uh, maybe 50-50 at best right now, going into the rest of these visits. Uh, I just, I think the other schools would have to sort of fail for him to wind up here. They'd have to sort of drop the ball somehow. It's just, you know, some kids want to come to Miami and some kids, it's just, it's an uphill battle. I, I, I get the sense with him. Uh, it's a little bit of an uphill battle. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see where it lands. All right. Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, that one's going to be tough. He's from Georgia. Um, I'm sure he has dreamed of playing in the SEC. Uh, a lot of offensive linemen do. Uh, so we're just going to see what happens. But Miami's got it. Like, I, I think there was one point, Matt, where we counted like 50 offers out to offensive linemen. I mean, they're <laughs> not crazy. like they're not being shy. Like they're identifying guys that they think can play and they are spreading the tentacles wide and they're going to get their group of offensive linemen. I feel pretty sure about that. Um, speaking of the hunt for offensive linemen, Matt, I got to tell you about a kid, uh, a, a class of 2025 kid that I met on Saturday at the Cristobal camp that I was really, really, really impressed with in every single way. And that's uh, Ali uh, Kalan Ivalu. Um, his sister played volleyball for Miami. So there was a natural connection there. Alex Mirabal is recruiting at the school another player. So they built a connection there with the coach and, and that player. So there's a little bit of, of relationship building going on around this kid's recruitment. And there is no doubt in my mind that he came to this camp on Saturday looking to get an offer from Mario Cristobal and Alex Mirabal. And he did, in fact, get that offer. And even though he's 2025, Matt, my feeling is, you could just pencil him in to that 2025 class. I think Ali's coming to Miami. Um, I won't ask you to comment on that because I know you, you, know, you didn't uh, talk to him and meet meet with him like I did. But um, I really think that he will be in the 2025 class. Okay, another thing that happened Saturday um, that I really enjoyed was I watched Emory Williams work out. And uh, he's the quarterback we've been telling you for weeks that we think he's going to be in this class. Um, and I still think he's going to be in this class, but I think there's a little bit of a monkey wrench. Let's, you know, I'm, I'm, let's be honest. Miami is not giving up on Jaden Rashada and Dante Moore. And they've made that very clear. Those two guys are at the top of everybody in the country's recruiting board. And I think Emory Williams understands that. And um, I spoke to his dad out there. And his, I think his dad understands that. They sell the right things. They're not afraid of competition. He's going to school to be a student first. Um, and that's all great stuff you want to hear. The other factor is with Tyler Van Dyke likely going to the NFL after this season, and he's going to be down to essentially three scholarship quarterbacks. And uh, they need quarterbacks. You know, you want five. And, and you know, you want to have options with quarterbacks. You don't know who's going to develop um, and be the best. Uh, you can try to project it as best that you can. But you, uh, you just do not, you know, really, really know. Uh, so Emory Williams worked out for an hour, uh, threw a lot of balls. I think he checked a lot of boxes for the coaches. There is no question Miami wants him, Matt. But the coaches were honest with Emory and his dad. Look, we are still recruiting these two other guys. You know, it looks to me like they're going to let the landscape settle. Um, I think they were, they were, you know, close to being ready to commit. It, you know, if, if everything was like, you know, hey, like you're our guy, you know, but considering the recruitment that's going on of the other two guys, it's probably best for everybody to just sit back for a couple of weeks, let things unfold and then see where things are, you know, here at the end of June. Wrong, wrong. It's time for my DNR, Gary. I'm very upset about this whole recruitment. Good. Okay. This whole recruitment. Yeah. All right. The, 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 I don't know where to start. I don't understand 
when you're trying to recruit a quarterback like this, you don't, I don't want to say they're going to lie. Like Miami's a little too honest. That, that That's my DNR. They're too honest. Don't tell you gotta him. You got to be honest in this situation. No. No, no, you gotta no be other honest. school. Definitely. Okay. So, so guess what? This is what Miami's risking by being honest. They lose Jaden, who they very well may not get. They're probably not getting Dante Moore. And they put off Emory Williams so much with this, hey, you got to wait. Hey, you got, hey, we love you, but you got to wait. Yeah, I don't think they agree with you. Hey, Matt. if you, hey, if you think, come. I don't think they think they're out of it to the degree that you do. They literally have told him, even if you come, we're taking one of these other guys. And if they do take one of these other guys, he's going to be number two. He knows he's going to be number two. Why would he even, why would he, why would he commit and wait a month or two months? He's going to wait and see what they both do, in my opinion, because it doesn't behoove him whatsoever to go to a program that's already basically told him, you're our backup plan. I wouldn't have told well, him that. I'm sorry. Man. Like, okay, so honest. does he just it's go good. to it's, it's, should he just it's go a, to Mississippi it's, State? So he just should he just go to like Mississippi State and what not pro- enjoy listen, maybe not no. enjoy himself? I mean, he no. loves the U. He loves the campus. He loves the school. This so is how he every just go to Mississippi State. Hey, I'll have a better chance to play there Let me ask quickly. You Who were the best recruiters? Tyler okay. Van Dyke was no place. Nine Mar- months ago Mario there. Cristobal. Mario Cristobal has seen the best recruiters, and he knows they tell half truths. They tell white lies. You have to. It's recruiting. You can't say you're our fourth guy on the board. In this case. But we really want you. So he's you not want a case. quarterback that wants to compete. You don't think that Emory Williams has gotten the sense that he's number three on their list, Gary? Because if you don't think that, I can't even talk to you. He's number three on any list that includes those other okay. kids. Okay, okay, but you don't. But that tell doesn't him mean that. you can't beat them out. Look at the kid of Georgia last year. Of course, he can beat them out. out. But you don't Tyler tell him. At but Gary, here's the year, problem. Tyler Van Dyke was no place. Okay, here's the he was problem. no place. Now they're saying he's going to be a top ten pick in the NFL draft. That's got nothing to do with it. Here's the problem. Once but he knows he's. You can't he's, predict these things with quarterbacks. You're not listening to me. Once he knows he's number three, which you and I both agree, he now knows he's number three because of what Miami coaches honestly told him, which good for them if they were honest. Anybody that's recruiting him and those other two kids. But you don't tell him that. If he comes in and thinks, okay, Jaden Rashad is coming, but they told me I am at an even level. They like me just as much. He sticks. Now if Jaden Rashad comes and they and he knows, hey, I, I was number three on their list. They like him better than me. Why would he stay in the class? It makes no sense. So why would he commit uh, now? Why did- why he did he test the Verde stay at Miami? Listen, when, when, here's what would have happened. Kozar, when Bernie Kozar was the because, starter. Because they were Why told they were just as good. Out and then win the Heisman Trophy. Because guys that come in together, they're told they're both as good. Not, hey, that guy's better than you, but you can come why anyway. Did they, why did Listen, Baker Mayfield stick it out at Oklahoma? Why? Like, you could go on and on and on. I mean, good Baker programs Mayfield, have more than one good quarterback. Correct, but you don't tell him this. Here's the problem, right? If If they hadn't told him, if they said you were as good as any of these guys, we might take another boat, but you're the as you're as good or better than any of them. We don't well, care. Some ways and he then he then he commits. He would have committed, but he didn't because they he they told him you're number three on our list. He would have committed, not taken other visits, not had all the other schools pushing for him. It would have shut down okay. his recruitment. Jayden now Rashada, instead, he, he may not wind up here. Miami gets zero of these three quarterbacks. That's all I'm saying, Gary. That's my DNR. I'm concerned. What do you, so what do you say? Oh, hey, hey, Emery, well, you know you're our guy. You're number one. Of and course, Rashad visits. Next week. Why not? They want to take him anyway. Why not? Why would you say, "Hey, you, you, you just have so you to, know, we now want to take two quarterbacks"? You be you, no, you got to be honest. No, you got to be honest. You know, if you're not honest, if if you're not honest what happens? If you're not prospect. honest, what's the worst thing that happens? You if you're not be honest, honest, Gary. It's what happened at USC last year. You keep saying that over and over. What happened at USC last year? They said Jake Garcia, shut it down. We want you. He commits. Okay. Yeah, Instead of looking around, then they get the other guys. Correct, but then they get the other guys they really wanted, and they set Jake free, which is what a program does know, because it's in the best interest of the programs. Is it right? I don't know, but that's my DNR. I don't yeah, know what's what happens happens if Jake Garcia on. turns out to be better. What are they going to say when Jake Garcia, if Jake Garcia turns out to be better than those other kids? Right. They screwed Emory themselves be by lying to him. They didn't screw themselves at all. They Listen, got two other quarterbacks they think are better. I watched Emory Williams throw. I am, he's a very good prospect. I think is I think he's going to have to continue to build strength, his upper body strength. Um, but his ball placement is great. Uh, I mean, they 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 gave him situations. He handled it all well. Uh, that doesn't mean he's athletically as elite as Dante Moore and Jane Rashada. So uh, the question is, Emory Williams, if Dante Moore or Jane Rashada choose Miami, are you still willing to come to Miami and compete with them? We can promise you that you will get a fair shake and a fair chance to compete, unquestionably, which he would. Like, they don't preordain these things. I mean, you know, these things kind of, like, happen. 
I mean, and and I keep bringing up Tyler Van Dyke, perfect example. I mean, we're sitting there in fall camp last year watching Tyler Van Dyke and Jake Garcia compete with each other, Matt. Like none of us, nobody, none of them, nobody in the media contingent had any clue what's, who was going to be. What's that got to do with? What's that got to do? What's that got to do with anything I just said? Because you don't know with quarterbacks is my point. Of course, you don't, you don't. know. With, Correct, you don't know but, but look at Oklahoma but if last you want, year. But Gary, if you want, you're not understanding my point at look all. At Georgia last year, you're not understanding my point. They didn't tell a Georgia quarterback you're number three on our list, but we still want you when we get our number one or number two guy. They said you're as good as those guys. Commit and compete with them. That's how you recruit quarterbacks. I, listen, well, these Miami coaches are Henry amazing. Williams, we love you, which they do. They, I mean, they love them. You can tell they love them. Okay, that the first mean time, the first that... time they talked to him, they said you're our only quarterback we're taking. Now they're like, you can commit because we saw you throw, but we're going to take two. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to read between the lines. These these Miami coaches are amazing recruiters. I just think sometimes you can be a little too honest in recruiting. It's not great for the student athlete. If you're on the side of the student athlete, you're saying I'm an idiot. Why would? Of course, coaches should be honest. But if you're on the side of the program and you want two great quarterbacks, probably not the way you want to handle it. That's all I'm saying about it. Listen, I think question number one is, you know, Emory, are you willing to compete? If you're willing to compete, we're all in with you. We love what we see. Period. And 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 if they take another one, great. If they don't take another one, great. You listen. We, we, you know, sometimes you'll sign five defensive backs. And only two are going to be starters. Listen, it's if like, they had, if they had, life. Gary, this is this is a fact. If they had told him you're our only quarterback, we are taking. We want you now. He would have committed. Peter, I believe yeah. that's true. He would be committed. Yeah. I think they should have done that. And if Jaden and Dante wanted to come after us, you call up the kid and you say, "Listen, you're still our guy. We love you. You're going to be great. We just have we want another quarterback to compete because guess what? That'll make you better. That'll make him better. You deal with it then. That's all I'm saying. Get the commitment on board, man. I mean, Get everyone else to just, back off. Get them to shut it down. And then you go from there because you need one of these three guys. Quarterback you has to have one of these, these three guys. If this guy keeps taking visits, which he wants to do, he thinks he's getting more major offers coming up. If he winds up somewhere else, I don't think Jaden Rashad and Dante Moore are 50-50 or better right now. If they get none of the Jayden three, Rashad it's a, it's a big Dante mess. Moore are going to work themselves out in the next few weeks. And then Emory Williams gets to make his decision. You know, they're not getting both Jaden Rashada and Dante Moore. So the, if, if Miami gets one of those guys, Emory Williams gets to make a decision. Do I want to go compete? Period. Easy. Uh, and, my, and my prediction is, is he will not. And therefore, he's going to be gone anyway. So, like, I would have taken the commitment. I'm yeah, sorry. But, that's just me. But Call it me doesn't crazy. matter at that point. If, if you get Dante Moore, Jaden Rashada, and Emory Williams decides he doesn't want to compete, the the, the the show will go on. Okay, the show will go on. Yeah, you need right, one of the three. Um, one last. Um, yeah, the the, the, the show the, the show the show will will absolutely the um, the show go the show on. Dell the show Dell will go on. I'm not sure the show will go on if they don't have one of these three quarterbacks, but we'll see. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm unbelievable. I, I I do have one. Um, I do have one other thing. <laughs> That I want to talk about, but uh, first let's hear from our friends at Life Wallet. I will be your shield in the fiercest battle. I'll defend you. That was a great commercial, guys. I will guy. be your shield in the fiercest battle. I'll defend you. Yeah. Oh, it's hey, my name is Cleveland Reed, and I play offensive line, and my job is to protect. I protect my family with Life Wallet. How about you? Of course, I got Life Wallet. It's the best way to protect my family. Long as we go together, we'll die. We'll never be a light. Couldn't let the darkness try you ever. Truth in my word, you I lied to never. To protect you and your family, get Life Wallet now. Life Wallet. Saving time, saving lives. All right. If I finally play it, I don't know what was Great. going on. Um, all right, Matt, uh, one final thing I did want to talk about is at the Crystal Ball Camp, the 7-on-7 seven seven Saturday, uh, Nathaniel Ray Ray Joseph showed up at Miami yet again, um, and he competed, and boy, did he put on a show. Uh, I mean, some kids just have it, you know, and, and Ray, Ray Ray has it. Uh, you know what? But somebody did point something out to me, that, you know, we, get, we, we do get – Every as, like everybody else, we get all caught up in the recruiting of the cycle that's right in front of us. But uh, I was thinking back to see we were we, I was talking to somebody and and the subject of Sam Bruce came up God. and 
Somebody says to me, Ray Ray Joseph and Sam Bruce are the exact same player. You just don't ever know. Like, you know, Sam Bruce just lost his way, you know, never worked out. You know, everybody knows what, what happened from there. And uh, just one of the saddest stories of a Miami recruit in recent history. Uh, and then I, you know, thought about it and watching Ray Ray, like he is a very similar type of player in the seven on seven setting. They can't cover him. They used to not be able to cover Sam Bruce. Uh, and um, obviously just an exceptional player. So Matt, I think that his presence at Miami Saturday is a big deal. Okay. He was at Clemson recently. They obviously tried to get him to shut his recruitment down, get him, you know, to stop considering Miami. Uh, that did not happen. He was back at Miami again on Saturday. And um, as a final thought for today, uh, do you think Ray Ray Joseph, a commitment to Miami, a flip off of Clemson is imminent? Well, first of all, you mentioned Sam Bruce. I mean, I just want to say my heart breaks, not obviously for Sam and his, and his friends and family, but I mean, his mom, I, I talked to his mom when Sam was having some struggles at, at Miami. I mean, she cared about him so deeply. I mean, it's, she's such a wonderful lady. He was a great, great person, you know, I mean, aside from football, like we, we talk about football here, you know, and people get all caught up on the football side of things. And this guy's terrible. This guy's great. And uh, whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, these are also people, you know, and it's, it, it was so sad. I hit me pretty hard when that happened. But um, as far as, um, as far as, um, Ray Ray. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he'll be wind up at Miami. I told you, I, I said in the, when we were breaking down the top two fifty, uh, he and Mark Fletcher are, are picks of mine to be hurricanes. I still believe that. And even if they wind up not at Miami, I'm going to say to the day to till whenever that they were going to be Miami hurricanes, but X, Y, and Z happened, you know, because right now this is what, I think will happen based on things I've heard. So I think they're both going to be hurricanes, but again, everything has to play out. There are a lot of factors that go into this now. So that's why anybody who does mock classes now or predictions for any particular recruit who's uncommitted considering numerous schools, it's, it's just a bunch of people call it clickbait. I don't really like that term because everybody who clicks on stuff that I write, it's actual real news. <laughs> but that's the truth. I mean, mock class, mock classes, uh, mock NFL draft a year from now, uh, the initial top 25 football teams, it's all a bunch of garbage and fans get caught up in it. And, and this magazine is Miami in the top 12 and this magazine doesn't happen in the top 50. Well, they're doing that to get you riled up. So you'll talk about their magazine, you know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I do think both those guys will be hurricanes. Uh, but again, a lot of, you know, there's just so much time left. It's, it's just so hard to say we're sitting here in June. It used to be, Signing day was in February, and in January, we'd still have no idea what was going on with 90% of the class. We're here in June with a December signing day six months away, and people are asking us, hey, where's he going? What's going to happen? Like, people will tell you, other other recruiting writers will tell you, oh, here's where he's going to go. Oh, this is what he's going to do. Anyone who tells you that, don't go to, don't talk to that person anymore about this stuff, because they have no idea. Like, yeah, Miami coaches even might think they're getting a guy, but guess what? So does the Clemson guy, or so does the Ohio State guy, or so does the Alabama guy. They're, they're, these recruits are they're 17 year olds. Think about if you have a 17 year old child or had a 17 year old child who's now older. If, if you had a bunch of veteran salespeople selling products, the same product pretty much to your son, and he had to pick which one he wanted, when it was pretty much the same product, because let's face it, at the end of the day, you know, Miami, Alabama, Ohio State, yeah, people can say, oh, well, this program's better or not. But they're pretty much the same animal. You can go there. It's a top program. You're going to be on national TV, and you're going to get a great education. Well, at Miami. And you're going to have a great NFL future, potentially. But the point is, how do they say no to one of those products? Are they going to say to Alabama, Ohio State, whatever? No, thanks. I'm good. No, they tell them, yeah, man, I'm really interested. Yeah, I love you guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. That's what these guys do. And it's hard sometimes to, to weed through the garbage of it, which is why I think sometimes Miami coaches – are so honest because when you're that honest in some grain inside somebody's head, they'll be honest back as the idea. Not always true. And, and, you know, when I did my little facetious DNR about being so honest and how it can sometimes backfire, the idea behind being honest as a coach is you find out from that recruit, instead of him giving you the same thing, he's telling everyone else like, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, I'm coming. Maybe he'll actually say to you, you know what, coach, I love you, but uh, you were so honest with me. I got to be honest with you. And I don't want on signing day to leave you hanging without a, you know, linebacker in this class. Like I'm going to be going to so-and-so or I'm not coming here. That's the idea behind the honesty. 
the, the reason Miami coaches are so honest, you can say it's because they just love the student athletes so much and want to help them wherever they wind up. But no, they want the student athlete to come to Miami, and they and if the student athletes if the student athletes not coming to Miami, they want to know as soon as possible he is not coming, so they can move on to somebody else. That's the truth. I mean, that's the idea behind the honesty, and they're all great coaches at Miami and great guys. It's not only for their own self interest, but that's the bottom line. That's what they want to get to by being so honest and developing these great relationships. And I think they know where they stand with Ray Ray. I think they know where they stand with Mark Fletcher, and. I don't think Ohio State knows where they stand with Mark Fletcher, and I don't think Clemson knows where they stand with Ray Ray. That's my opinion. And I agree. Uh, you agree? I. What? I agree. <laughs> yeah. What are you? I what's mean, going on over there? It, it, it took a, it took a little while for you to finish that little soliloquy you were going through there, but like, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it's, I totally it's agree. So, so we'll see what what happens there. All right, that's going to do it for today, everybody. We thank you so much for starting your morning out with, with us and putting yourself through this 35, 36 minutes. Of, Nobody uh, made it through 36 yeah. minutes. For those of you that watched 10 minutes, congratulations. If you made it all the, all the way to the end, <laughs> I don't know how you had that much free time and wanted to do this. So kudos to you. Kudos to you for making 36 minutes <laughs> on this show consecutively. That's amazing. All right. For Matt Shodell, I'm Gary Furman. We we do thank you for joining us, If you even whether you made it through the whole 36 minutes or not. Um, and we'll see you next time, everybody.